Hello, I'm Martin Warwick. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Telecom TV and I'm here in The Hague in the Netherlands at Tech Mahindra's Network Services Conclave 2016. And I'm talking with Amit Tuwari, who is VP of Strategic Alliances and Systems Engineering at Affirmed Networks. Sorry I looked down to read all that, but there's quite too, bit too much to remember there. So thanks very much for putting up with me. Ah, um, no I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'd like to ask about what affirmed networks brings to the SDN and NFV party? What's different about you from the other players that are out there? Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. You know, it's great to great to speak with you. If you look at affirmed networks, one very unique thing about affirmed is we were designed from the ground up. You know, as the company was formed, it was designed on the principles of virtualization. You know, the product, the architecture, everything that we do. The view has been how do you apply IT type principles to mobile core telco networks, right? And so when you start from the ground up with a clean sheet of paper, with the best possible technology, working with key partners like Intel, uh, you know, you get to design the product where it is optimally designed for those networks, right? And if you think about it, essentially what we were doing was applying statefulness to stateless type characteristics, which are the IT networks, and statefulness of the mobile core, which is the telco network, right? So it is a challenge, and it's very hard to solve if you don't start with a clean sheet of paper and you design it for stateful mobile networks. And that's a key differentiator of Affirmed. The thing that's, that translates into is, because we designed ourselves from the ground up for virtualization and NFV, we are able to actually design our software to get the maximum performance that's out there in the industry from x86 you know you know architecture yep. bar none right and that has really helped the operators cross the chasm over from testing dabbling trying out mm -hmm. boutique type deployments to mass scale deployments right so one thing that you know we feel very good about is we have about 40 commercial deployments today carrying very large number of mobile subscribers. You know, you know, the two, you know, you're already talking about 20 million type of you know, deployments, right? And the thing that actually really excites us even more than that is we actually have more POCs and trials than that 40 commercial deployment number. So it tells you it is no longer a case of trying and testing this out. It's much more a case of crossing the chasm, getting to massive deployments. So if you look at Affirmed, first of all, the architecture, designed natively for NFV and virtualization. Second, the commercial success of being able to drive virtualization into 40 you know, large mobile networks worldwide. And then another segment larger than that even, POCing and trialing is out, gives us a very unique positioning and vantage in the virtualization transformation. So you started with a completely blank, blank, sheet, of paper. blank sheet. What about the legacies that were already in your potential customers, mobile service providers, what happens to that legacy equipment and mindset when you apply NFE in the way you have coming to it? This is where the future is, this is what we're going to do. This is a very, very key consideration, right? And, uh, you know, most of us, if you look at, you know, our leadership team, we come from, you know, Telco, you know, you know, you know, supplying to telco operators for a very long time. So one key consideration that we took on top of the basic characteristics of virtualization was you cannot imagine any large or even you know small mobile operator basically saying, hey, this is really great technology. I see what it does for me from a CapEx perspective. I see what it does for me for an OpEx perspective. Guess what? I'm going to now turn off my legacy network and turn you on. Right? Imagine that, right? That, that just does not happen in our it business. Right? It can be done, right? Yeah. So one of the things that we took into consideration is exactly what you said, Martin, right? Is the legacy has to coexist. It has to coexist as we are ramping up on the new network. Mm -hmm. And we have to prove our value. We have to prove what the new network can do and prove it almost to an order better than what they have in legacy. So coexistence is key. That was one of the mantras that we, you know, we always developed with, right? So the thing that we did was we developed our software with the view of getting the maximum performance out of x86, getting the best performance out of a virtualized architecture, but we designed it fully standards compliant, right? To, you know, to CGPP, to every standard that we saw out in the network, we are fully compliant. So guess what? The, the main reason why the operators felt comfortable 
testing out on us, you know, and actually deploying and then ramping up on us. They could coexist us with this new architecture completely with what they had existing, and really they could see the performance gains, they could see the CapEx, OpEx savings, and they could see the service velocity for deploying new services. Remember, I mean, they're trying to compete with OTT players, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to do service function chaining on the firmware architecture, being able to deploy new services so much faster than on legacy was a proof point. Like, okay, so I can coexist, now I can do more services on this. Guess, guys, guess what, guys? Why am I still running this, <laughs> right? So that was, that was a key strategy and that has worked very well. Another question to you is about a matter of scaling. The thing with mobile networks, as you're only too well aware, is some of them will have, as you mentioned, 40 million subscribers. Some others will have 120 million subscribers. Do your solutions permit that sort of scaling and for them to be applied quickly to scale up like that? Absolutely. And, you know, you know if you look at the design goals of, you know, of being able to service the mobile operators, right? Uh, given mobility has been such a key driver, right? And I mean, I'll actually you know, share something slightly adjacent to exactly your question is, if you look at new build-outs actually, right? Even for data centers, guess what's driving the new data center build-outs? It's actually the mobility. It's the mobile traffic which is ramping up, be it video, be it IoT, be it, you know, all these different classes of services now. They're driving the data center build-outs, right? So one of the key aspects of, you know, what we need to consider and we, we did consider as a firm was making sure we can scale, right? And scale has been, because you know, if you think of NFV driving down CapEx and OpEx, the business model starts working as you start scaling up. And when you scale, we're talking multiple dimensions. One is, can I apply this architecture to my enterprise network, my consumer network, my IoT network, right? But then also, can I actually scale up this network for all of these types of networks, but also from 10 million to 20 million to 110 million. So well, one of the key aspects of scaling up is you need people who are skilled in actually being able to run these new networks. And as you can imagine, the skill set has been an issue. Some of the operators have made public announcements how they're reskilling, they're actually ramping up the skill set level of, you know, of their of their, you know, worker base. Yep. But to help with that, you have to actually think of what can we do to actually faster automate and quickly orchestrate these services, right? So actually those two are linked. The skill set of the people who are actually going to be running these networks and the automation and orchestration part of, you know, how do you actually scale up? So one of the things that a firm we noticed as we started early deploying to the 10 million and beyond kind of scale, there has to be something along the automation aspect of the uh, network you know, a network run yep. that has to be solved. And we really couldn't wait for Mano, you know, and all the different initiatives that you see within Mano, you know, OpenO, OSM. We are very much part of it. We are actually working with operators who are driving this. But in the interim, as all that part gets sorted, one of the things that we did was we created an automation platform that can help operators, meanwhile, bridge that gap in the skill set and be able to automate the day-to-day -day operations of the network, which is a critical part, right? And that, our view is, we help them solve the problem today, and we work with all the different automation and orchestration platforms and standards that are being driven by the large operators like OpenO, OSM, every aspect, Ecomp and others, right? So that is a challenge, and we took a very pragmatic approach to how to solve it to get to those 110 and hundreds of millions of subscribers being virtualized. We haven't got much longer to go in terms of this interview. Uh, I want to ask you uh, a question finally about partnerships and ecosystems. Um, one of the most noticeable and unique things about virtualization, about network transformation, and about SDN and NFB is the fact that for it to be successfully applied, there needs to be collaboration and partnerships between, quite frankly, people that once upon a time were at one another's throats. Uh, real competition between companies, uh, Real, and in the past they would never have worked together. Now it's a matter of commonplace. It may be for a particular purpose, it may be for a particular time period, it may be a JV, it may be a partnership, whatever it is. You work with Tech Mahindra. Why do you work with them? Why, what do they bring to the party that's different from anything else? And what's it like working with them? That's a very, that's such a key component of actually driving scale and integration into mobile networks, right? You know, what you just asked, Martin. Yep. Uh, Tech Mahindra is a gate partner, right? And one of the things, actually a few of the things that they bring, you know, you know, to this partnership is their ability to integrate into existing mobile networks because they know exactly how the current mobile networks work. 
they have the skill set for virtualization. So they actually help bridge that gap that I was talking about earlier. And you know, there's a there's a key component to them, which is the scale that they can very quickly help the operators scale up to and flex to ramp up from those tens of millions to the hundreds of millions of subscribers. That's a key component they bring in. Other part about you know the ecosystem, you know. I've been in the business for a long time, and you know, I, I think of the early days of the internet, right? You know, remember? I mean, everybody used to work with. You know, you would compete, you know, in your earnings announcements, but you would work <laughs> with everybody, right? And that's how it all started. That was the beauty of, of you know, the whole ITF movement and, and internet as it started. We have come full circle. You know, if you look at the NFV virtualized networks today, actually, the technology drives cooperation. You know, there is the whole vertical silo-based approach that a few telco vendors used to take in the past, by its very definition, virtualization opens that up. You know, it's no longer viable for somebody, a large telco vendor, to say, I'm going to sell you a vertical. That's what the operators don't want. The operators want best of breed, they want open interfaces, and they want the ability to quickly stitch together services across different vendors. So actually, it has driven cooperation, and, and, and to us, it's beautiful because you know, it helps best of breed vendors like Affirmed actually take their real place in being a supplier to mobile operators. Very, very interesting point. And it's absolutely true, of course. Um, Amit Jawari, thank you very much. Thank you so much.